So recently there was a new edition of Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Games Workshop's fantasy counterpart to Warhammer 40k. I've known about Age of Sigmar, or AOS, for several years now, but never quite found the time to sink into it, what with having far too many Warhammer 40k projects on the go. The only interaction I'd had with AOS before all of this was with the release of Cursed City, the box fated to be cursed and unavailable in your city. But after purchasing the Dominion box set to admittedly steal the Stormcast for 40k reasons, I found myself drawn to this lovely core rulebook. There's tons in here, much like the 40k core rulebook, with info on factions, stories, artwork and of course, rules. Now I'm a sucker for setting and mood, and if nothing else, this book gets across the mood of the setting really well. A passing interest became lots of reading time, became less passing and more interest, particularly when it came to the descriptions of the realms. These areas, the realms, uh, each represent an aspect of the setting. Fire and anger, water and life, shadow, light, the heavens, metals, even beasts, and my personal favourite, death. No, real world death is not my favourite, but the Halloween style, spooky or spoopy aspect definitely is. Everything about the realm of death, or Shaiish, spoke to me on a childish level, and from that point, I was in. I was painting those stormcasts whether they liked it or not. The first thing I wanted to do was help translate the mood into something less abstract and more tangible. An easy way to do this is with colour or lighting. Now, colour is still somewhat abstract, but bear with me. I have a couple of little lights that I use for my workbench and for some photography, which I started playing with. Looking through the artwork, Shaiish is often a sickly green or a deep, almost royal purple, and it's the latter that I found myself really drawn to. I started messing with the lighting and seeing what my Cursed City minis look like, and I have to say, I'm into it. The darker, almost midnight blue was chosen as an offset colour, as it complements the purple quite nicely. And when I imagine Shaiish, I always think of purple sand and black sky. Now the purple sand is simple enough, that's the shade glass, that's how I see it in my head. And the black sky, just nighttime in the realm of death, I guess. Now I can't replicate black with a light setup, because black is literally the opposite of light, but the blue was a nice substitute. After messing around with this for some time, I was starting to come up with a few ideas of how I wanted to paint my Stormcast. I knew I definitely wanted purple, and I also wanted black to be heavily featured on the mini to account for what the light couldn't do, so have some black and purple on there. Gold was also an obvious choice for me, as its colour is really heavily associated with Stormcast Eternals. Now, in the video I'm diving right in, I got so excited I didn't even film building, uh, spraying or painting the, uh, painting the purple. It's worth noting these guys are only very lightly super glued to their bases, and that's good because uh, later I'm going to snap them off and do the bases differently. I didn't go too overboard with any of the other colours. I used pretty generic Citadel base colours for this, uh, Lead Belcher for the weapons, uh, a bit of Rhinox Hide for the leather, and trusty Xandry Dust for the parchment. I think Xandry Dust is basically almost always used for base coating parchment or purity seals, and there's really nothing better, its coverage is just so good.
Now you might see in this bit I'm starting to base coat the weapon blades with corn red and I'm going to come back as to why that is in a bit. <laughs> The shading and highlights pretty generic, uh, it wasn't meant to be any kind of contest winning paint job, just wanted to get them on the table and give me that feel good factor of completing a small project and making a vision that had previously only been in my head real. Ta making it from that uh, visual spectrum into the real physical spectrum and it was going, going fairly well. As I mentioned earlier, I decided to do something a little bit different with the weapons and have a bit of fun. Now, I'm a pretty heavy Instagram user and I've seen a few people's minis, let's be honest, usually salamander space marines that have molten weapons. That is a glowing core with flaking black on the edges and I decided this was the perfect time to have a go at that effect. I used smaller and smaller amounts of reds, oranges, yellows and finally off-whites to create a glowing effect down the centre. Every time I did this I filled a bit less of the area and got a bit sharper with the highlight and it started to make a really really nice effect. Once I was happy with the glow effect, I grabbed uh, a broken crusty brush, one still very much loved, and gently stabbed some black onto the edges. Gently stabbed. That's, that's not a, f a phrase I'm a fan of. Now we're almost done, but there's one thing left I haven't covered. Basing. It's always been a massive part of the hobby to me. It's where the mini stops being a standalone feature and becomes part of the environment that it's in. I've been known to use some pretty wacky colours in my bases, with my Grey Knights and Death Watch forces both having crazy saturated colours to offset their slightly more monotone armour. I've also designed entire forces and backstories around bases. The Order of the Shattered Spear, my sister's force, were made out of a desire to use flower tufts and real plants, and suddenly they were defending the inner sanctum of their monastery. The Black Templars were the same, but at night. So I started to bring some gentle object source lighting in and voila, two forces with very slightly different bases who could work together on the table, night and day. 
This time, I decided to go a bit more simple. I decided to use the contrast paint, Shayish Purple, apt isn't it, through my airbrush just to make it a bit, a bit easier, get the coverage on faster, but then I found it darkened the glow quite a bit. So I came back in with the airbrush, making that highlight brighter and brighter to make the ground pop better. I then came back in with some standard white acrylic paint. Now if you haven't got this in your arsenal, you really should because it's excellent for all those point highlights. Dotting somebody's eyes, perfect. It's brighter than any other Citadel paint or any Vallejo paint that I've seen, so really useful. And I use that just to uh, punch up the contrast again. Finally, I got some quite bright lilac just to dry brush those rocks, and I used some Abaddon Black to rim the bases. And once it was all done, I glued the Stormcast back to their bases. But something was missing. As I mentioned, I usually like to have a bit of fun with my bases, and these felt just a bit too normal. So later, off camera, I decided to change all of the glowing essence to a bright blue, and I feel so much better about it. Like the Stormcast are bringing the lightning of Azir, Sigmar's house, to Shaish with a vengeance. So yeah, I love basing. <laughs> And there we have it. I only showed five that I was actually painting, but I painted 10 of these guys, and I'm really excited to go further. The shades of Sekhmet are ready for battle. Yep, that's the name I chose. Who is Sekhmet, you might be asking? That's a bridge to cross when we come to it. For now, I've been Sultan. See you again soon. <laughs>